Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Funny Fears Week 1. This is a fun unit where we are going to be looking at different stories and how different characters face some fears with a little bit of humor. Our learning objectives for the week Okay, so are to be able to identify the four main characters of the story, Monster on My Roof, and you're going to record those in your graphic organizer. In addition to that, you need to be able to come up with two details from the text that describes what you know about each character. So you should have about eight details, two for each character. Then... You're going to be able to write an opinion argument, so that's a paragraph where you will argue which character is the monster in the story, Monster on My Roof. Of course, you will need your details to go along with that. And then we will be looking back at sensory language and seeing how the author, Demarest, used it in The Monster on My Roof what he did and how it helps us better understand the story. Here is our story, The Monster on My Roof. You can see down here you have an illustration. There will be illustrations on most of the pages, but not all. And I will be reading the text over to the side. Here we go. Billy Baldersnook lived with his mother and sister in a very small house. It was so small, in fact, that after his mother picked her room and his sister picked her room, there weren't any rooms left for Billy except for up, up in the attic. But Billy didn't mind because it was almost like sleeping in a treehouse. Almost. One night, after Billy had put on his PJs and brushed his teeth and had a good night kiss from Mom, he clump, clump, clumped up the stairs and got under the covers as usual. Then right before he fell asleep, thump, he sat up. Mom, did you hear that? Hear what? said his mother, her voice muffled from downstairs. That thump, he shouted. Are you thumping down there? No, she yelled back. Nobody's thumping down here. But something is thumping. What if, what if it's a monster? There's no thump and no monster. Billy was not reassured, and sure enough, just as he lay down again, thump. Mom, he yelled, there was a thump again. Go to sleep, Billy, came his mother's muffle. But there were thumps. It must be a monster. Then he heard his mother clump, clump, clumping up the stairs, and the light flipped on. All right, she said, let's find that monster. She took Billy's hand, and they looked under the bed. No monsters. They looked in the closet. No monsters. They searched in the toy chest and the bookshelf and the dresser drawers, just to be sure. No monsters at all. See, said his mother. Maybe he left, said Billy. His mother tucked him under the covers again. Even if there is a monster, I'm sure he's as scared of you as you are of him. But... How can a monster be scared of me? Trust me, she said, turning out the light. Now get some sleep. She clump, clump, clumped down the stairs. And just when Billy was starting to think she might be right, thump. Mom, he yelled, bolting upright. Where was it coming from? He listened hard. Aha, I know where the monster is, he said. There are no monsters, called his mother. No, no, he said. We searched the whole room. But the thumping isn't coming from here. It's coming from the roof. What? I said there's a monster on my roof. Go to sleep, Billy. I'm not coming all the way up there again. Billy huffed. It was hard to sleep when you have a monster thumping above your head. Nothing to be scared of, he told himself. The monster is as scared of you as you are of thump. Eek! Billy squeaked. He clapped his hand over his mouth. Did the monster hear him? He tensed up, stiff as a fence rail. The thumping had stopped. Maybe the monster was... Eek! Billy squeaked again, yanking the covers up to his nose. A spotlight glared down out from the sky somewhere. He 
could see it through the curtains, waving around. Mom, that monster's got a spotlight now. A spotlight, his mother shouted. A big one. He called the monster. He called, the monster's looking for me. I don't see any spotlight. And there's no such things as monsters, repeated his mother. There are two. And he's, eek! Be quiet, Billy, and go to sleep. Billy did quiet down. And because the spotlight was suddenly shining right through his window, then a hand pulled the curtains back. A big hand and an ugly face appeared in the window. A big and ugly face and stared right at him. Billy stared back, trying very hard not to squeak. Then the ugly face disappeared and the spotlight switched off. Ooh, that was womp! Mom, he screamed, the monster is womp, jumping womp on womp, the womp roof. The ceiling shook, the bed shook, the whole room shook. And then there was a roar or a growl or whatever it was. It was enormously loud. Billy stuck his hands over his ears and jumped up. This it, that's it. I'll make my own noise and scare you away, monster. He grabbed his baseball bat and thump, thump, thumped on the ceiling. For good measure, he let out an extra loud, Eee! But the monster kept whumping, so Billy kept thumping, and the monster kept roaring, so Billy kept eking. And it all made such a ghastly racket that Billy didn't even hear his mother clump, clump, clumping up the stairs until she threw the door open. And Glug's mother roared from downstairs. Glug, Gladwillow, you little fluffball, stop jumping on the bed. Glug stopped in the mid-bounce. Mom, I told you, he said. It was a human in my dollhouse. I was yelling and jumping on the bed to scare him away. There's no human in your dollhouse, said the mother, shaking her furry head. There is too, said Glug. I even shined my flashlight down there and saw him. He's little and ugly and he keeps squeaking. Not another word, said his mother. There's no human. And even if there is, I'm sure he's as scared of you as you are of him. And boys and girls, that is how our story ends. So if you looked at the illustrations, they could help you figure out what was going on. We had two characters, Billy and Glug, and they end up being afraid of one another. My question to you is, where did Billy actually live? Just think about it. Okay, now we are going to complete the chart our graphic organizer this is in your packet or it's posted on seesaw or dojo okay i will get help get you started and your job will be to finish the rest of the chart the first thing is you can see we have two columns we have a character column with four rows one two three and four and then in this column over here we have uh, what we know about him or her my goal is for you to each come up with two supporting details that explain what we know about the character. So the first character we know is Billy. Okay, and we know that Billy is afraid of a monster. All right, that's one thing we know about Billy. We also know that he's a boy. We know where his bedroom is. We know that he has a mom. Those are all things that you can write in your graphic organizer to add to our knowledge of what we know about him. Okay, so I did the first character with you and the first detail. You need to come up with one more detail for him. Okay, the next way I want to support you guys is just helping to identify the characters. So in the story, oops, sorry, we also had, it's going to let me work, there it is, we had the character Glug, okay, he was purple, we know that about him. We also know that he's afraid of something. Write down, who do you think he's afraid of? That would be a supporting detail. These two are a little tricky. We have Billy's mom, okay? She's the main character in the story. She helps out Billy, okay? And also tries to calm his fears. And then our last character, it's a little tricky, but we do have Glug's mom and she doesn't have a major role but we can figure out one or two things about her okay so your task you have the characters written down 
All right, they're right here. We gave one detail of Billy. He's afraid of the monster. You need to come up with one more detail for Billy, put it in your chart, and then you need two details for Glug, two details of Billy, Billy's mom, and two t details of Glug's mom. Okay, just what we know about these characters. As always, reach out to us if you have any questions. This assignment can be submitted on Class Dojo through Dojo Messages Portfolio, or you can submit it on Seesaw.